You're listening to the Umfree Parents Podcast, episode 077. You're seen to chat about life, family, and of course, Umfree's McGee. I'm Sarah Jehaniak, podcast host, writer, mom of three, wife, and total Umfree. Are you prepared for what comes next? Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me for this week's episode of the show. I hope that you were able to check out last week's episode, which concluded the three-night run in Athens, Georgia, and also featured a recap of the show at the Mill and Mine in Knoxville, Tennessee on October 23rd. There is a link in the show notes where you can give that a listen if you'd like to. This week, we'll chat about the shows at the Suwannee Halloween on Thursday, October 24th and Friday, October 25th. Are you looking for the perfect gift for that rocker chick in your life this holiday season? Perhaps you're looking for a killer new vintage rock kimono for yourself or a new sweet piece of canvas art for your apartment. Life Clothing Co. has you covered. Featuring the cutest vintage band t-shirts, sweaters with feel-good sayings, rompers, a fantastic selection of beautiful bell bottoms, and some swoon-worthy home decor, you are sure to find something for that special lady in your life or that perfect outfit to wear to the next show. Check out the link in the show notes to take a peek at their amazing Grateful Dead and Led Zeppelin gear. Seriously, you or that lady in your life are going to love their stuff. Life Clothing Co. is your place for authentic boho vintage fashion. And exclusively for my listeners, if you use promo code Sarah Jehemiak, Rep 10 at checkout, you'll receive 10% off your total order. That's promo code Sarah Jehemiak, Rep 10, S A R A J A C H I M I A K R E P, and the number 10 at checkout, and you'll receive 10% off. Before we dive in, I'd like to quickly mention if you are looking to get the word out about your shirts, pins, jewelry, prints, your band that's going on tour, or a small business that's looking to work with some like minded folks, Um Freak Parents Podcast would love to help you get the word out. With ad time on the show, ticket giveaways, social media plugs, product reviews, and more, Um Freak Parents Podcast can help you reach and be seen by tons of fellow Um Freaks, musicians, and other kind folks looking to purchase from you, work with you, and support their fellow Um family. Email Um Freak Parents Podcast at gmail.com if you're interested in chatting more. Oh, yes. In case you missed it, Umfries has recently announced who will be taking over the job as lighting director, 24-year-old Ben Factor. Ben has done lights for Munyon and Spafford in the past. According to the little write-up that Umfries did on their website about Ben, he is a guitarist and graduated with a degree in sound engineering from University of Michigan. You college football fans know that there certainly will be all sorts of ribbing about that one within the Umphreys camp. Ben said that Umphreys single-handedly inspired him to pursue lighting. I think that's very neat and very, very neat that he was able to bring it full circle and work for them now. I will link the write-up about Ben on the Umphreys site in the show notes so that you can give it a read if you haven't. For those of you wondering, Ben did lights recently for the three nights in Athens, Knoxville, and Halloween. I did not attend those shows, but did see some videos and photos, and I enjoyed what I saw. I'm really looking forward to seeing his work in person. Based on what I saw from the guys that tried out, Ben had my vote, so I'm happy to hear he meshed so well with the band and crew, and will be along for the ride. On behalf of myself and my fellow Umfreaks, welcome aboard, Ben. Excited to have you in action and watch as you grow more into your art. What an awesome, awesome opportunity of a lifetime for him. Very, very cool. Congrats to you, Ben. There's a bunch of links in the show notes for articles, Ben's website, as well as his social media, so you can give him a follow. Okay, so let's get to it. Swanee Halloween this year held October 24th through 27th. The band has played this festival last in 2017 and then also in 2018. 
They have played at the Spirit of the Swanee Music Park actually 17 times, including these two shows we'll talk about here. However, the other times were either for the Bear Creek Festival or the Wanee Music Festival. Those two are also held at the same park as this one. This year at Halloween would also include Billy Strings, Andy Frasco, Doom Flamingo, Pigeons Playing Ping Pong, Tom Morello, which I saw on Chris's social media, he actually got to meet him, and Chris was pretty stoked about that. The smile on his face was very awesome to see. And Ryan posted as well that he rode the rail for the Tom Morello show. So very cool that they were able to get out and check out some music that they really, really wanted to see. I know they were trying to push for a Tom Morello sit-in, but it did not happen. Um, But who knows? There's plenty of future left, so we shall see. Anyway, this show, October 24th, was one long set with no encore and opened with 40s, dancing comfortably into its jam about four and a half. Half Delayed would come next, followed by Day Nurse and then Maybe Someday. Slacker next, which I felt is where we really got into this show. Starting early on, less than two minutes, it shows its independence and dances off. I may have mentioned this before, but Slacker is another one of those that's just really seen some serious growth over this past year, which is really funny to say about a song that's been played 382 times, but it is the truth. You can look at a few of them from this year, really starting with the one that we saw during the New Year's Eve run at the Tabby. That one made an appearance on the most recent Hall of Fame. Ones I felt are worthy of a listen from this year, um, recently from Resonance Festival on September 21st, St. Petersburg on October 15th, and Red Rocks from June 23rd. Coming back to this one here, slightly after seven minutes, shout out to Joel as it begins to swirl all around, just so beautiful, building up to become super empowering Really love being nestled deep inside of that jam. Definitely worth a listen. Prowler followed by a very solid wife soup. It doesn't matter coming out next. I felt another highlight from the evening, specifically when it comes back in about five minutes and then heads out on this sort of ominous feeling, mysterious adventure, finding its way out onto the other side about seven minutes. And almost kind of tumbles back in, but quickly gets its composure and walks confidently back into It Doesn't Matter. I just love that tune anyways. This one is another great version of it. A cover of the Toto tune, Africa Next, played a total of 69 times. Not played since last year at summer camp on May 27th. I know, you know, it's a whole joke when they play this, but... Honestly, it's always fun, and they do a really great job with this, and I thought this version was a lot of fun. I will admit, um, I listened to It Doesn't Matter, and, you know, it goes into Africa next, and I had it on in the kitchen making dinner one day, and the kids and I are just dancing so hard to this version of Africa It's just a lot of fun, and you know what? They do a great job with the lyrics. Don't sleep on that. Definitely give it a listen. The Triple Wide, another highlight I felt from this show, beginning with its expansion slightly after three minutes, that will open even further a few minutes later, and after it rounds the corner, building up into this massiveness that spills over back into the Triple Wide, That one, for sure, I think it deserves a listen as well. A very nice Jajunk sandwich with Ringo. Another personal highlight from this evening, I thought, tucked in there. Um, The first part of this journey that it goes on, of course, but also after it comes back into Ringo and then heads back out slightly after six and a half. Shout out to Andy about a minute later where it begins to build up and then slides right back into Ringo and stomping back into Jajunk to close out the first night for the band at Halloween. And, you know, a lot of people, I've said this before, you know, say things about Festi sets. Um, But I think this 
this first night um, definitely had some really great highlights to it. And even the second night, um, Friday, October 25th, this again being one long set and one encore, I did not feel that this was a standard Festi set when listening to it. I know I've said this before about Festi sets and my feelings about them. You know, yes, we're going to see quote unquote regular tunes like Attachments and Seasons and the Silent Type, but we have to remember that this could be the very first time that someone's been exposed to Umphreys. And, you know, yes, attachments can get a little old when you see as many shows as we do. Um, but, you know, for people that are experiencing this for the first time, those are songs that are going to get them interested. So I can see both sides in this, but this show definitely deserves a listen to. This evening started out full of authority with the new intro slash walkout tune, Punchable Face. This being the only third time that it's been played, debuted this past August 10th in Chicago. Moving right along into the previously mentioned attachments that does see an extended adventure beginning about seven minutes, Stasic matter-of-factly laying down the bricks as it struts on fully opening into a dance party about a minute later. I just enjoy where this one went, and I thought it was a lot of fun. Like I said, Seasons Next, and then very weirdly and eerily moving into 1348, really tapping into those Halloween vibes with that one, followed by Wappy dancing into itself a little after four minutes, enjoying a nice little adventure for about five minutes before coming down with Wappy creeping back in the background to begin its crawl back in, seductively dancing into Higgins and Bayless afterwards sharing a really funny story about a friend who is a police officer and apparently he pulled somebody over and, you know, they had him roll down the window and whatever, and they were listening to Higgins. So the police officer said, oh, you like Umphreys McGee? All right, well, go ahead. That's an amazing story. <laughs> I That would be like the coolest experience ever if you like met a cop and was like, oh yeah, I like Umphreys too. I think that would be really cool. Remind Me coming out next, followed by Come Closer, a mashup of the Nine Inch Nails tune Closer and the Beatles song Come Together, played only a total of 26 times and last played over a year ago, July 6th, 2018 at Red Rocks. While some may not like mashups and I'm not a fan of all of them, um, personally, I like this one. I think it's a good choice with it being Halloween and all too. And the silent type would close out the evening. Like I said before, I felt that this set was really good. It may not have looked that way on paper, but you certainly cannot judge an Umphrey set by that at all. It may not have been holy shit, sort of a out of this world set, but I think that it definitely still deserves a listen. I did want to throw out an honorable mention that Doom Flamingo also played at Halloween. Their show was on Saturday, the 26th. I do not have any information about that show, but what I've heard was that it was awesome. Not surprised to hear that. If you haven't seen Doom, I suggest you do. They're really good, and they're definitely gaining some much-deserved attention. So definitely check them out if you can. They're, you know, all over at festivals and stuff, so you definitely have an opportunity to do it. Um, I did throw a link to the Doom Room on Facebook um, in the show notes if you're not a member. It's a nice little space to find all of your Doom Flamingo-related information. So that's all I have for this episode of the show. Anything referenced this week, including the set list for the shows discussed, as well as where you can listen to them, can be found in the show notes. If you have any questions or comments about anything talked about in this show or any other episode, please feel free to reach out. I love hearing from you guys, so please do not hesitate to contact the show. How you can do that is in the show notes as well. And thank you again so much for joining me. I'll see you around these parts next week. Much obliged.